I have this. To make a gift perfect, make it personal. Use your imagination. Spend your time. Work your magic. Reap your reward. How can you make your holiday great? Easy. Make your holiday. A lot of times, the quality of the material will really make or break your project. And you know, when I was building custom high-end furniture, I realized in the quoting, the materials only ended up ever being about 10% of the value of the piece. So it was foolish to try to save a few bucks on the materials when they could affect the outcome so much. So when I go to the lumberyard, I have the list of uh, the sides I need, I need drawer fronts, I need the top. So I'm looking for the larger panels first. And I was lucky when I went this time, they had a lot of great, wide, beautiful, clear cherry. And what I'll do is it's all stacked and I'm looking at the ends. And if, if they're all different widths, I might make little check marks on the ends of the ones I wanna pull. And then I'll just get all the others out of the way. And as I pull them out, I'll stand up my check marked ones. And I stand everything up in front of me so I can really see and try to read the grain as best as possible. And then I can also see by easily flipping around just one hand, I mean, you can move lumber very easily when it's up on end, but I can see all this sapwood that might or might not be a problem. So sometimes they cut the, the board or the tree, the log at a point where it's about to bend. So sometimes you get some grain at the end that really starts to take off and it's difficult to use that because it changes the color or the read on the, on the face too much sometimes when you're gluing up. You're looking for checks, any kind of defects, knots, sap, and this is a beautiful piece, but is it wide enough? So it's 10 inches wide. My top is gonna finish about 20, a little over 20. So I can't really use this one for the top. I need it to be a little wider, so this one's almost 11. This will be beautiful. A really premium board for the top. I would lay this down, but I can see there's no issues up there. And my tops are gonna be um, almost 40. So I'll give myself about 40, let's say 42. I'll come down from the end a little bit. And then I'll come the other way. 42, and I'm above that check, which is good. And this will be my top. Now I could make a little indicator there too. When I cut it, I can see how these were arranged. Okay, so this is some beautiful cherry, but when I'm working with wider planks like this, if I'm not in a hurry and I've got time, I'll dress it down so it's close. Like here I'm um, just under seven eighths and I wanna get to about three quarters. Now it's like these planks have to reacclimate to 
the humidity in the room and all, and also there's been a change in the stability of the stressors in the plank. So if you dress it right down to the three quarter or whatever, you may come out the next morning and find you've got a little bit of a cup to it. And when you glue it up, now you have to reflatten that. So I like to let them chill out like this, at least overnight, and then revisit them. And if I have to, I'll face them, run them across the joiner one more time to reestablish flat, and then skim plane down to my final dimension. Then when I glue up, if I do have any issues, they will be minimized. All right, so I made those marks on the ends to easily identify where they were originally oriented, right there. Now I'm deciding, should I bring it around, like we were thinking, this way, and get a glue joint there. And there we're gonna have that reverse of grain because it's running down here and it's running slightly up here. And that would give that issue so that it would look, this one would probably look darker from one end and then the other would look darker from the other end. So let's try the slip. If we're able to take the way it's oriented here and just slip it alongside here. Now we've got the same grain here, but we all obviously have an issue right here. So we've got to get rid of some of this. We've, in order to, this is sap. You can see the sap is coming to the front and we've got this little blemish here. So if I could cut it off there and still have enough, then we could get probably a really nice glue joint right there. But let's check and see. That would give us 10 and a half. And if I put 10 and a half on here, oh yeah, we got 21 and almost a half. So plenty to work with there. So I'm gonna joint this edge and then we'll rip this off. And then I'll go ahead, while I'm at it, I'll joint and rip just to establish straight edges, then we can match it up and then find our seam. We'll get a good jointed glue joint on there before the glue up. All right. We're back to where we were. This is where, whoops, that's not it. Check. All right, so this is where our joint was. So again, we're going to avoid this angular grain and slip down this side. And that should give us a nice match. So that disappears pretty nicely. And I'm gonna go with that. And let's go ahead and mark it. So this will be my face. And now I can just joint these edges. And if I run them through the joiner in the same direction, so this will be running with the bottom against the fence, then this will be running with the top. If I have any error in my fence, it will cancel out. And I'm gonna end up with a dead flat 180 degree joint there. So I won't have to worry about the boards cupping or anything. Let's go ahead and join those and see how nice this looks. So when we're ready to glue up, we'll just get it in this position. I'm just gonna test it with a little clamp, see if it'll pull up nice. And get that aligned. 
looks pretty sweet. See a little reflection there. That will be a sweet looking top. So we'll let this baby chill a little bit and then I'll dress it down to the final thickness and glue it up and we will have a premium, almost appearing to be one board top. What is my problem? People think I'm a very relaxed, chill guy, but I'm so intense. I can break this 0.5 mil, no problem. <laughs>